Good evening everybody. Welcome to the studio today where we shall be doing some more scraper board. Some more on this cottage. I'll turn that off for the moment. It's not making a lot of difference. I trust everybody's feeling okay. So mainly a lot more work on the stones which have been used. Um, to outline them, bring them, uh, you know, to fill in the remaining spaces and then we'll do some more work on them to make them uh, stand out more, have texture and uh, include some of the mortar that's around them. I'm doing well for you for seven. I hope you are doing so as well. How is uh, your insane asylum going? Cryer, good evening. Welcome to you as well. Now, then, actually, I'm just going to change my glasses. Then I'll be able to see a bit better. Yep, that's a bit better. Um. Some mats, so some more not random random stones are required. which as I've mentioned before is actually quite difficult to do actually adding in random stones. They tend to become too random or too much like bricks if you're not careful. I think one way we might just do that is just add some odd shaped ones in around the place because then we'll actually have to fit uh, other stones in uh, amongst them. which hopefully will make it look um, random enough. It's going pretty good. The doors, windows, walls and ceiling. Okay. Like the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be one scary thing. So have you, um, are you getting enough confidence to, uh, to stream it yet, uh, Fear Reaper 7? Or uh, you, you want to get a few more done before you, uh, you take that step?
I've been looking at some uh, on the internet some um, examples of scraper board uh, done by other artists today and uh, some of them are absolutely amazing no no particular one in particular but um, a lot of things like animals for example with fur don't have look really amazing done in scraper board because of course it suits the style with the hair <laughs> okay fair reaper uh, one of these days one of these days <laughs> I might get to see how it's done then. But just looking at some of the others, um, it's sort of it's kind of kind of, uh, kind of really inspiring to see things like that and think just how nice it would be to do. Um, uh, to do some scraper board of things like you know uh, big cats or bears or I don't know, otters that sort of thing um, just because of the way they look uh, I might try something like that in the future but um, I'm not sure I've got the skill to do it properly just yet Everybody wants that emote done in some shape or form. And uh, I don't know whether it's done in uh, scraper board or whether it's done as airbrushing or done as carving or done as something else. Everybody, what is it about that emote that you actually? Um, you, know, you guys actually want to see and um, I'm wondering whether you actually mean the twitch face that comes up or whether um, you actually sort of mean the concept Actually, yeah, I'm not actually sure I, I would be able to explain what the concept is either. It's kind of a sarcasm type of uh, use, isn't it? You know, when uh, I don't know, you, you wouldn't exactly say it, it's it's a deliberate troll, but it's that sort of um, sort of use of it. I never quite, you know, you young ones, you say. I'm an old guy. Don't always understand some of these newfangled things. <laughs> uh, well if you are you'll need to keep the volume down just a little bit otherwise it'll feed back um, okay yep indeed um, um, I, I am being watched by a very special person tonight um, who is now mentioning things like my hair once curling <laughs> um, you need to remember there is a delay though of about 20 seconds um, scrape your outfits <laughs> it's, 
it, so it's black and white unless you use the coloured one. That's that's logic, Raya. That's that's logic. Okay, and. Now I've got to um, employ an alt skill, which is uh, which is something that I learned at work, and that is sometimes when I was uh, a long time ago, um, when I was doing stuff, actually physically doing things with telecommunications. Um, we used to work on circuits where quite often you'd hear an echo, uh, and quite a long echo, so sort of ten or twenty seconds, uh, on some things like calls. If you're calling transatlantic a long time ago, you used to get that echo coming back if there was a fault, and you had to keep talking, um, or you know hold a conversation with the echo, and they've got that effect going on here at the moment. It's proving quite interesting. <laughs> oh dear. So the the idea, Gaia, is actually literally to do. <laughs> Indeed, you do have interesting logic. So the the idea is to do the the actual face itself. Now that's going to be. Um, it's quite. I mean, it's quite a small one to actually understand what the face looks. I mean, it's you sort of you see the face and you understand what the face is, but I can't actually really see the face with it being such a small icon. Uh, I mean, the tongue is quite easy, but uh, it's sort of a, a held smirk, isn't it? It's sort of a, uh, a, a very tight-lipped smirk sort of look. Hmm. Oh, well, we might try it one of these days, you know, just for the, for the fun of trying something like that. Uh, okay, so I yes, I am. I am trying to do something to fill in this re this remaining space here. Up to just under the uh, uh, under the the thatch, and then we have got some big areas to do. What I want to try and do is keep this fairly light, as I mentioned before. That way, then I can, I can always dark it, dark it, make it brighter. Um, if I keep it uh, uh, quite a, quite a dim look to it, so it's in, it's kind of enough to for it to be seen at the moment. And then once uh, once I've uh, sort of got got it all in there, I can then start to add more in. Uh, you know, like sort of messing around down here you start to get a little bit more brighter um okay thanks Graya. go on off a look just to uh... yeah that tight lip sort of okay well it might make an interesting portrait one of these days well uh we'll see I shall um, I shall store that in. I've actually started a notebook of ideas. It's not got many in it at the moment, but I'll uh, I'll I'll put that in now. Can I, yes, I can put that in now before I lose that link, because uh, otherwise it will go out of the uh, copy. Let me just dump that into here. There we go. We might try that. Anyway, so just while I'm going on with this, um, if uh, if there's anybody watching that doesn't know what this is, this is scraper board, also known as scratch board, uh, scrape board, uh, scratch, all sorts of uh, titles all relating to more or less the same sort of thing and you get the manufacturers trade names involved as well this is 
this is a trade name uh, scratch board scraper board is also a trade name but essentially all it, all it is is some form of backing in this particular case this is like a thin cardboard or a thick card um, but you can get fiber board or, or like a hardboard type manufactured backing and then laid over the top of that is a layer generally speaking of porcelain clay because it's it's white and it's quite a fine clay and then uh, once that's dried they layer over the top of it Indian ink black Indian ink um, just ended up often make other colors but black Indian ink is used and then any form of sharp tool is used to scratch through that surface uh, this is um, basically a sharp point but a scalpel uh, razor blade um, paper clip edge of a circuit board anything basically that is reasonably sharp can be used to create um, uh, scratches in in the material you can use sandpaper you can use wire wool fiberglass pens uh, and things like that and depending on the number of scratches how wide they are um, how close they are together um, depends on shows depends on the how, yeah, how many they are how close they are together makes up how bright something looks so you can get things really dim looking really bright looking depending on uh, the more scratches and the wider the scratches within a particular area the brighter it will look which is why the roof sort of looks brighter than the stones that I'm currently doing because they were quite wide scratches these stones are really quite fine scratches Graya, sometimes the daftest things I, I, I mean I suspect yeah, I've suspected that you might have been joking just from the point of view of everybody always wants that one done. I've I've now had it on I've, I've had it on Punchcraft, I've had it on uh yeah, you you've mentioned it on Scraperboard. Um I've had it on um the pyrography. I don't think anybody's actually said it on on, on carving yet and jewellery just doesn't come into it, but um I'm, I'm sure if I was doing airbushing, somebody would have suggested it on there as well. But uh, um, you know, any idea is an idea, you know. Sometimes when you start and you're thinking, what can I do? And it might sound really daft, but you, you can sometimes look at a, like a black square board here and look at it and go, you know what? What can I do? And you sort of... I mean, there's there's hundreds of millions of things that you could do, and um, and sometimes you can just sit there and come up with you know like the Earth rise, stars, a planet, uh, a spaceship, um, you know, a cottage, uh, a country lane, a tree, a cat, dog, dolphin. You can come up with hundreds of thousands of ideas, and yet other times you just stare at it and go. But I, you know, and, and you can even go. But I don't really think I can feel like doing a dolphin. And you just sit there, and you just can't come up with an idea that inspires you to actually do it. I mean, you can come up with the ideas, but it's about seeing that image in your mind almost, and go, yeah, actually, I do want to put that down on board, paper, whatever. Um, and sometimes, you know, ideas like totally off the wall ideas like the kappa face go you know what let's have a go and that may be what will happen um, i mean the dragon the carving that i did it was kind of like that's really complicated you know what let's just have a go let's see what happens what's the worst that can happen i ruin a piece of wood you know all right it's eight nine pounds worth of wood but so what we've had a bit of fun we've had a go at it we've learned something uh, and so um yeah so don't worry about throwing ideas like that <laughs> um even if you were joking sometimes i take jokes seriously be careful
but I was I was kind of really inspired uh, with some of the uh, some of the things that I saw this afternoon. In fact, actually, it, it was kind of intimidating as well in some ways because seeing seeing some of the artwork was absolutely fantastic, and I, you almost get the impression seeing it that somebody's gone for every single cat hair. They've gone and they've done a slow mark like that. You know, nothing fast, and it's you know, it might have taken a weeks to do um, to do the piece of art because they've very meticulously scratched every single line not done it in any sort of brush or anything like that which is kind of what I'm doing here you know fast scratch marks um, and it's kind of do I really have to slow down that much to get that good maybe the answer is I do I don't know but um, it was kind of I say it was kind of daunting to see, but absolutely inspiring as well to see some of the images that were there. I say things like bears and um, owls, just some of the animal stuff, which seem to seem always seem to. Well, I suppose people like animals, don't they? So that's kind of why they're often the subject. But um, hairy animals do seem to feature a lot in uh, in scraperboard. I have just realised why that special person was watching. Um, you have a, f a dilemma, uh, Fury per seven. Okay. Probably something like linoleum would have been used in older hospitals. Um, or, or, well, I, I suppose if you go back into Victorian age, it would have would potentially have been tiles, I guess, on floors. Or wood, more than likely, I suspect, if you got really old. Um, but you're kind of wanting something that's kind of creepy, really, I, I would suspect. So, you know don't necessarily go for realism in the respect of you know it would be whatever it is you know uh, parquet wood flooring um, you know what would be creepy T torn linoleum or lino uh, broken tiles uh, stained tiles something like that um, you know, go, go for what gives you the atmosphere rather than what's real. I mean, it might look like a real torn linoleum if you see what I mean, but um, you know, go, go for go for what will give you the atmosphere that you're after. Because I think you know things like you know, white tiles won't really won't necessarily give you that sense of um, fear that you're trying to get. Okay, well, there you go then. Use those. You know, whether whether they're real or, or would really be used, doesn't matter. You know, you you are making this, and what you're after is the atmosphere. So go with that. It's it's an artistic thing again. You know, it's you're the artist, so you can do it. And <laughs> nothing is going to be <laughs> okay. But you know what I mean. It was. Uh... Okay, so we fill that section in there, and we now go fill this section in over here. Uh, let's just put some awkward shaped blocks in. In odd places. Uh... So we have to sort of then fill in around them. And hopefully this will help not make it too regular. I 
I think it was you, Gray, the other night that was asking whether or not um, I had to press quite hard. That's just the thing I was finding just then was um, with the pen this way around, it wasn't quite scratching as much as I wanted it to do. I was starting to have to press harder. But if I just turn it turn it over, uh, I'm getting I'm getting uh, really thin, light scratches, which is what I was after, without needing to apply any pressure at all. So it's you know it, it is part of that blunting of the tool. <laughs> Yeah, rotted, uh, rotted. Well, rotted anything always looks creepy, doesn't it? So, yeah, that's. Um, always a useful, uh, useful thing. And if you sort of put some mold or something onto it as well, then. Hmm. Okay, I'm, not, I'm sort of seeing, yeah, okay. I'm sort of seeing the, not seeing this edge of the window really because of the angle that I'm looking at it. So I need to make sure that the stones overlap the edge of what I've done as the window frame there. You really wouldn't see the window frame on this side because of the perspective. Um, interesting and I am kind of getting quite fascinated with the textures that can be created quite um, uh, well they're easily created but I mean like very very fine lines here and it's it's almost like a really light pencil mark yeah that's right uh, exactly the same sort of thing is going on perhaps going to have to find a subject where I can actually experiment or, or maybe I'll just get a board out one day and just sort of experiment with just small blocks of, of different scrapes and things because it's getting quite interesting the way in which um, just with with a, you know, a few fine scratches I can create a very dim but almost single tone of colour so you can't see the scratch it just looks like a, a grey block um, but then you know you just add a few more in and, and you can add texture to it it's getting quite um, quite interesting now then, I think it's possibly getting a little bit dark around here as well so I've just had some light uh, cast on the subject. The only thing is I'm getting a lot of reflection now off of this uh, particular piece. So if we can close that curtain again and I'll just put the light on. Uh, the reflections are in a different angle then so it doesn't glare off the piece. But uh, thank you. Um,
right. Um, I'm going to see if I can put something of the door in, I think, just for uh, something different. So it's going to be a shadow, so I've got to remember not to go too far up because there's going to be a shadow which will be cast in. Sloan decided actually whether this is going to be daytime or nighttime. I may not have to worry about it for quite a while yet, but um, it is still a decision that needs needs potentially needs to be made. Daytime will be a lot brighter. Now, in terms of the contrast between different areas, it won't actually matter. It's just how bright the whole piece is. Um, in sort of together, so the the brighter it is, the more likely it is daylight than 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 moonlight. But um, And there will be very slightly different uh, different highlights uh, with sunlight rather than moonlight. Because you'll get shadows more than uh, in with sunlight more than you do with moonlight. So I'm trying to be really really light scratches here. I almost want it to be sort of almost invisible, so it's a very light grey. You, so you can sort of just see it. Um, as I say, when I get up here, I want to really sort of fade it out. There's no light coming from inside the cottage, so nothing to, to illuminate the door on the inside. We'll get just the edge or this, this edge of it here uh, from with light from outside but uh, it'll very quickly just disappear into shadow. I may even possibly be in a little bit too a little bit too heavy handed there as well, but that well we can fix it if necessary because I can always um, I've got some black now I've got some black ink which will go over the top of this. Um, but what I am also expecting is that when I do some more work on the stones and lighten them up and lighten, potentially lighten up some of the thatch as well the very pale area here will actually look darker again so it will, uh, it's a bit like with pyrography when the stuff that's around it is very bright it will look dimmer so it won't quite uh, it won't quite look as bright as it does to me now uh, here although actually I'm looking at that and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. In 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 real life, in the presence of this piece of uh, artwork here, it uh, it looks quite good. Does the does the shadow? It actually looks like there's a shadow being cast. Uh, but I do need to put the door frame in.
Now I do want the door frame to be a little bit more visible, so I'm applying, although I'm still scratching quite lightly, I am applying more scratches into the area so that it stands out a little bit from the door. And you can you can sort of see the edge of it. Now I'm trying really hard not to actually keep scratching in the same place, so I actually distribute the scratches out over the area. Uh, I don't want sort of great big white blobs, which I will get if I'm not careful. The yeah. Uh, a bit like when I'm carving, the, the sharp edge tends to want to drop into the groove that was there from the previous scratch. Um, oh, thank you uh, very much for that, Graham. Um, it, it looks a little well. Uh, there is a there is a difference between seeing it on stream and stream, seeing it um, here in in person. Um, it. It looks a little bit cartoony here in person at the moment, a, a bit like the blocks are floating rather than being tight together at the moment. They, the, when you're seeing it on stream, it's sort of you're sort of seeing something between the blocks. You know, you're not you're sort of seeing a greyish sort of area between them. Oh, that's what I'm seeing when I look at the stream, uh, which makes it look like a wall. Here it. Uh, in person it doesn't quite yet so there is there is a difference between the two maybe I'll just have to make sure I only um, exhibit my artwork uh, down the video camera that might make a difference but it does look quite good uh, I will um, I will admit to that okay so I've got a uh, I've got a big hole here at the moment <laughs> I ought to fill in. Let's put some stones in there. Then we've got this, uh, obviously, this, this side gable end here to uh, to do some on. Um, have to remember to go up underneath the uh, the thatch what I'll probably do at some point once I've done some more work on it is bring that thatch down a little bit so that it completely covers the edge of the stones uh, I'm trying not to go too far into it at the moment because I'll create it because it's already scratched I'll create a whiter area which might be whiter than I want but ultimately afterwards once it's done and I, I can do some more scratches over the top that'll hide the edge um, and I'll be able to control the brightness as well at that time.
Yeah, I, I, I want to try and do something like that. Uh, here it's it's jet black. It's, it's the background, and and it makes the it's making the uh, in person it's making the stones look like they are floating, in, in mid air, um, kind of like Minecraft where you you know the blocks you can block one out and uh, knock one out and it just sits there. Uh, so the the kind of floating at the moment when when you're looking at it on stream I don't know if it's something to do with the resolution of the camber but you sort of see you kind of see like a grey area between them that's tying them together a bit like mortar which is, isn't seeing here so uh, for an artwork that you obviously want to look at in person rather than down a video camera it needs to have something in there to hold to hold the blocks together. Um, what I've got to be very careful of is that I don't make it the same as the blocks so you can't see the blocks so mortar is either going to be lighter than the blocks or darker um, and, and it will also have little shadows on it and things like that so it's going to be an interesting sort of challenge just to fill that in in some way and it might just be easier not to try and represent the shadows on the mortar just um, do a, a slightly darker tone, this, but the same tone across the whole the whole piece as as mortar, and then do all the sort of the highlighting, the shadows, effects, and things like that actually on the stones themselves. I think at this stage what I'm kind of looking to try and do is do stuff which is not do stuff which is recoverable so like I'm doing these stones here quite light that way then I can darken, the, darken them I can make them brighter if I want sorry I'm talking about darkening I'm kind of talking in reverse as though this is paint that's going to get if I put more on it will get more prominent and sort of darker like you would do with a pencil Unfortunately, it's the other way around. I'm making it lighter, but it's still making it more prominent. Um, if I do it quite faint, I can always press harder uh, in in the future. And whilst I, you know, because I've got the ink, as I've mentioned, I can repair things if um, I make things brighter than I want them to do. It would kind of be nice to see if I can get it right, sort of first time without having to use use uh, a correction just like a challenge where you know a, a paper artist with a uh, sorry, pencil artist might challenge themselves not to use an eraser although an eraser is a really good thing to use sometimes in pencil artwork uh, to smudge edges to just lift off some of the color smooth it out um, and uh, it, it, it is a legitimate tool. It's not necessarily a tool for correcting things. It actually can be a tool uh, for actually producing the artwork. So whilst I talk sometimes you know, like about correcting mistakes uh, and using the black ink for that, it can also use it as actually part of the medium. So I could, for example, thin down the ink so it becomes less opaque so I can then paint let's say an area over uh, here on the on the thatch and it will go grayer um, and therefore you know I can turn the the roof down without hiding it completely I can just turn it down with a thin layer of, of gray really uh, or I can show some of the patterning that you might get on a thatched roof which is sort of worn away a little bit now um, just by where I paint that grey wash so you know I, whilst I, as I, say, I keep talking about correcting it it, it can be used and um, quite legitimately as a means of producing the uh, the artwork and in some ways even with pyrography uh, where I kind of see it's not easy to correct Again, it's the same thing. If I felt if it was appropriate and um, I was doing fur in a different way, I might, for example, take um, a fiberglass brush or a, some sandpaper or a small wire brush 
uh, over the top of the pyrography to create scratches to simulate different types of fur or hair within that pyrography rather than having to do it at a, uh, a large uh, sort of a macro level as I've done with Junior and Felix to create sort of fairly large fur textures I could potentially create smaller ones uh, with with scratching in some shape or form and possibly then uh, you know, applying more pyrography over the top just to, to uh, smooth it out a little bit but it's you know it's it's a different it's a slightly different technique um, working with pyrography rather than just straight heating of wood uh, we've filled in all that sort of area around here and now I've got to do this one so I'm going to assume that we, we've got lots of small thin blocks of wood and wood, a stone here on the outside just to have something of a change of use quite large blocks elsewhere so I'm just going to try um, and use some thin uh, thin thinnish sort of blocks actually I was just thinking then whether or not I could actually use the the um, leather strop that I used to polish the uh, chisels with just to um, polish the edges of this uh, this tool I might try that shortly because it's getting a little bit it's getting a little bit blunt at the moment have a fairly sizable roundish sort of stone just in the middle here for no other reason than I feel like it That's a bit too round. <laughs> now let's um, change its shape a little bit. So something just a bit odd in in a way. Um, As I mentioned, it becomes really easy just to keep doing rectangular, rectangular stones. Even though you know they might use them a lot, but even then they're not 
they're not bricks so they're, they're still quite irregular It becomes really easy just to fall into the trap of um, of doing regular blocks. Now I'm going to try and just see if I can hone the edge of this. Sure, you could. I'm afraid I've kind of missed that uh, what I was talking about at the time, Graya. Um, what are you sure I could? I've, I've missed that one, I'm afraid. Let me take my glove off because I don't want um, polishing compound on my glove. This will be interesting if it works. See if that made any difference. One thing I uh, kind of learnt about today as well is uh, when I'm scraping this off, I'm actually, as you might see, because it's all over the glove, but I'm creating like black dust. And uh, one of the techniques of, that I learnt about uh, with animal fur is to take a, a damp paintbrush when you once you've got that sort of you know black dust around as it, it sits around to take a, a damp paintbrush and sort of brush that black debris back into the scratches and that sort of creates a again turns them down a little bit and sort of creates a slightly varied texture so um I'm guessing, and I, I hadn't really thought about it, but of course Indian ink is a permanent ink. It doesn't re-wet, so putting water on it, or a small amount of water on it, wouldn't affect the black. wouldn't want to put a lot on there, because the um, if the clay, if it got into the, the clay, I can imagine that swelling, and then it would start to crack off and all sorts of things. Oh, OK, yeah. We'll find out. I'm just <laughs> having just done it. Let's find out whether it um, whether it, it worked or not. Now, when I was running this over the strop, it was catching. Um, when I was when I was running this way, it was catching um, and roughing up the surface of the strop. So it was obviously a, a slight hook on this side. That's gone, um, having honed it. But I've now got it on the other side. So it has had an effect. Uh, I can feel that uh, that slight hook on that side. So it does look like the leather strop um, idea actually worked. So that might well extend the life of these um, these nibs. Uh, I'll have to try the one that's blunt that I um, obviously got these for. See, I'm a cheapskate. I don't want to. I don't want to buy new nibs if I can resharpen them. They're not fantastically expensive, but also they're not exactly cheap. You know, they're not uh, they're not two for a penny. So, um, you know, if I'm if I end up, well, I suppose there's a trade-off, isn't there? Um, if 
if you produce a really high quality work but to do that you need to go through half a dozen tips then I suppose it's it's worth doing on the other hand um, if you're practicing then uh, you know and developing a skill then maybe it's not worth it quite so much Well, I suppose that then also becomes the issue of are you, you know, uh, are you not getting the best out of what you're doing because of the tip or because you don't have enough skill and that's that's the tricky bit I guess knowing which uh, which that is certainly with things like uh, the chisels for the carving that that makes you know that's that that's certainly a consideration you know it's um as i mentioned before it's worth getting for the for the chisels getting a quality chisel because it makes carving possible shall we say you know, it's it, it, it's any deficiencies then are down to your skill, not down to the tools. And that's probably the best way of putting it. Uh, but and you know it's not down to the tools, therefore you know you have to practice. It's not, you know, if you if you're trying to carve with a um, a kitchen spoon, you know, if if you think you should be able to do it with a kitchen spoon, you don't know then whether you want the spoon. Whereas you know, it might be obvious to you that a spoon's blunt and therefore you're never going to be able to carve with it. So, you know, at that point, you know, it's it's not down to your skill. It's down to the tools that you're using. So, um, having said which, I'm sure somebody somewhere probably has used a kitchen spoon to uh, to carve things with and, and been quite successful with it. There's always somebody done something interesting like that somewhere on the Internet. I wonder if my extra special viewer is still watching. Apparently not. I'm not that interesting, guys. I was about to. I was, I was about to ask my extra special not viewer then uh, whether or not she, you know what what it was that was more fascinating than I was, and I was thinking she'd probably be looking at um, uh, something maybe from uh, Will Young because he he actually owes her money. I don't know if you know Will Young, a UK artist, but um, so she might have been looking that up, but. Mm. Uh, okay. Current uh, apparently it's current 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 affairs that she's looking up at the moment. Um.
we've got okay my I decided my viewpoint was stood there so I can see the windowsill a little bit I'm not going to be able to see not going to be able to see the edge of the window and I should be able to see a little bit of the window frame there uh, and then a capstone over the top so I'm going to put the capstone in um, I do know the capstone is going to be a nice wide stone because uh, it has to be because it's as I mentioned before it's what supports the uh, the wall above the window opening So it has to be has to be a single stone. You can't sort of put two joined in the middle; they tend to fall down. Okay, and then we'll put some fairly large stones, I think, just down the side here of the window. Just because I'm feeling a little bit lazy and I don't want to do too many. Kind of wondering what I'd do if I was actually doing a brick, you know, a standard brick building, because you'd be doing geometric bricks. I can imagine actually for for you guys on stream, that might be a little bit boring. can actually imagine for me at this end of the stream that would be quite a bit boring as well uh, so maybe I'll avoid lots of brick So, got some stones in around that. See if we can do. Yeah, let's go for a, something really large at this side here. Again, I'm being a little bit lazy, but I'm I'm half wondering whether going into into a lot of detail on some of this stuff. is actually not fantastically good for you guys to watch because I can quite imagine that if I was going into uh, into super fine detail right, and I might be end up using a magnifying glass to do it uh, whether the fact that things are not changing particularly very much I mean even now it's it's a relatively slow change for you guys to, to watch whether it would actually become uh, too boring 
because it, it is also quite difficult to keep up a with something like when I'm carving I can keep up um, a running commentary of what it is I'm thinking and doing uh, and, and you know explaining what it is and why I'm why I'm making whatever decisions I am at the time uh, but for something like the scraper board here it's kind of like um, once you've made the decision to colour in an area it's not like the wood grain changes so I've got to change the angle at which I'm cutting or something like that it really is just a case of well I've you know I've got this metal pencil and I'm just craning in an area and it can become really quite repetitive I suppose what I ought to do whilst doing something like this is actually change the subject completely and I don't know talk about 3d printers for example rather than rather than scraper board uh, until I actually come across a new element that I'm going to uh, going to do in here because 3d printers are getting starting to get a quite interesting uh, with the new new materials that are coming out for for it uh, incorporating well things like wood for example is being incorporated into uh, into filament uh, wood fibers so you you're getting uh, a 3d print that looks like it's made out of wood uh, and perhaps you know, it looks like it's been carved out of wood and some of the intriguing things about that it starts to make me wonder whether it becomes possible to actually carve it I know you can you can apply a level of pyrography to it because one of the things you can do with um, uh, with the wood filament is if you heat the and it's only a few necessarily a few degrees but if you heat the nozzle a little bit then you can make the extruded material darker because you start to do scotch the wood fibres that's in the plastic uh, and so you can vary the um, the colour of the item just purely by changing the nozzle temperature and I guess you know the speed of extrusion as well probably has an impact in that just like it does, uh, pyrography does the, the um, speed of movement But there's sort of metal, um, metal embedded uh, plastics, so you know, like a pewter, I don't know if it is pewter, but a bronze type uh, things you like make like basically like a bronze type st uh, statue or something like that from, uh, from, from plastic, which um, as an artist actually uh, strikes me as quite an interesting way of producing material I kind of also wonder whether you could extrude you have to do it in a different way but extrude wax for example so you could you know build a candle in a 3d printer hmm. interesting all sorts of things like that I know you can do clay they can extrude clay, they can extrude, obviously extrude food, that's the big thing which is on, you know, it gets into the news a lot these uh, these days at any printer show where there's a, there's a food printer. But it's just kind of, at the moment, kind of like uh, mashed potato, it might be mashed chocolate or something like that, but it's kind of like a mashed potato thing which is, you know, um, 3D printed out and potentially cooked on a hot bed at the same time or something like that but it's uh, it's an interesting sort of area I am uh, as I keep mentioning I've got a 3d printer here it's one of the rep uh, printers to build with uh, a try three three heads for it so in theory I can print color and one of the things that's just arrived recently is a Kickstarter for uh, a, with up until now really if you wanted 
to have multiple colours on a print or multiple, well, multiple colours, shall we say, you'd have multiple heads. And one of the real problems is that with that is it takes up build volume. Uh, but also you've got to level the he each of the heads exactly. And you can't use auto leveling because the, well, I suppose, you know, suppose you might be able to. You still have to, uh, now you still have to level the heads and level the bed um, and things like that because the heads are in different places and therefore when, you know, when the leftmost head needs to go lower, it can't because the rightmost head will be hitting the bed, that sort of thing. Um, but what has um, just, you know, they did a Kickstarter for is a head where the three, three feeds, three colour feeds off material feet to come into a single nozzle um, and you can mix them by driving them in at, at different rates you can mix them so if you take the proverbial red green and blue or cyan magenta and yellow um, then by mixing them in different ratios you can produce more than the the individual colors which is quite an exciting sort of thing but it exits through a single nozzle. So you don't have any levelling problems other than levelling the single nozzle. Um, and you can use auto bed levelling. Uh, and it's... Uh, so one of these days I'm quite keen to try that. Once I can get um, once I can get the thing built. I know it will be, won't be the top quality compared with um, printers these days. But I will at least have built it and got an understanding. And I like building things. As you guys should have realised by now, um, and uh, but in the meantime, I've got I'm waiting for another Kickstarter as well, which is a little it's a Tico printer. It's supposed to be a little Delta printer. So it, instead of it going in X Y, um, it's got three arms and it actually moves in any direction it wants across the bed. Uh, and Delta printers fascinate me so. Um, a little Kickstarter that was. It's, it only has about a four inch build volume, but that's due in a few couple of months or so. If they ever succeed in getting it out, I suppose. But um, that should be interesting because that should come ready to use. So no building involved in that one. So um, that could be an interesting thing to, uh, to stream. Working with that uh, 3D printer. And now I won't print, print gun parts. There's no point. Apart from the fact that uh, gun ownership without a license in the UK is illegal. Um, the, the gun bits that you can print are the non-important bits. And I don't have a gun, so what's the point? But anyway. And there are certain other objects I won't print either, <laughs> which uh, I, as I am given to understand, everybody asks. Um, so, you know the answer then before uh, before we get that far. Okay. So what else? Um, I've got quite a few kicks. Uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter is an interesting, um, an interesting site that I occasionally look at. It's very easy to get um, uh, engrossed in Kickstarter, and um, you've got to be really careful with it. I don't know if any, I'm saying Kickstarter as so though everybody knows what that is. It does seem to be fairly, fairly widespread n uh, known, but it's it's something called uh, crowdsourcing, 
where people effectively say, this is my idea that I'd like to do. If you give me money, I'll be able to do it. And in many cases, there is... Uh, if you give me money, I will be able to give you this reward for doing that once I've done whatever it is. Uh, but it is, um, there's no promises involved. So it's not like you, you know, whilst a lot of people and sometimes a lot of projects that a lot of Kickstarters um, pitch it as being, this is like a pre-order. It's, it's not. It's... Um, it quite literally is. I'll give you, you know, give me, give me your money in the hope that I will do what you, have, I've said I'll do, and you'll get something back for it, and uh, that doesn't always happen. So it's it's speculation. It's a bit like you know, sort of buying a lottery ticket or um, uh, speculating on the stock market. Sometimes you win, sometimes you'll lose, and it's about picking the right, you know, the right ones. But it's it's really easy to get carried away sometimes. It's it's a bit like uh, everything on eBay is not necessarily the cheapest that you can buy it. You can sometimes buy stuff cheaper elsewhere, and some of the stuff on Kickstarter is sometimes is available elsewhere and at um, at less cost. So far, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't lost any money, shall we say? There's some things that I've uh, that I have backed, which are quite late. Um, I've got uh, a 3D. Well, it, you might have heard of um, 3 Doodler, which was a plastic extrusion from a pen-shaped object. Got uh, got one. I did back one where the uh, the pen is 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 about like that in terms of size. So both as diameter and of length. So it's more like a well. This, obviously, this is a um, a Wacom drawing pen, but uh, of that sort of size, uh, which looked really intriguing because of course you being that small you can use it more like a pencil than like the three doodler which was a great big sort of object uh, which would uh, look to be quite difficult to do and I've backed another one which uses UV curable resin which in theory is due also due shortly um, so it sort of pumps the resin out through a nozzle and then there's three UV LEDs around the end of it which I'll say almost instantly solidify it, so you can build, uh, you know, three D ish objects um, from that. And I'm hoping, actually, I'm, all of them seem to still be. Um, oh, those two certainly still seem to be making progress, even even though they are both rather late. Uh, one of them, at least, is almost a year late now. But it's still going, so I'm quite hopeful to actually get that. And uh, when I do, of course, it'll be something to play with on on stream. You don't get the you don't get the same quality out of those as you do um, like a, a true three D print, uh, you know, a true printer, uh, extrusion printer, just purely because it's handheld. But um, you know that's uh, something. Uh, that's a bit like the difference between using a plotter and using a pencil. You know, it's um, the plotter produces a lot straighter, finer lines than maybe you can do by hand, but you don't get the same artistry out of it. Um, it's one of the other things. The other oh, yeah. Since I've got a. You know, a, a 3D printer and another one that may turn up and we've got these 3D, at least one of the 3D pens which uses normal, well, in theory uses normal um, filament. Um, I do have a filament extruder <laughs> which was which I backed. 
Now that one looks a little bit more bleh, well it's, it's sort of been made but it still looks like it might run out of money so I might not get that one but um, at the moment I am hoping that I do. Not quite sure what I'll use it for to be honest. It seemed like a really good idea at the time because I was thinking I probably end up building lots, you know, making lots of 3D things, uh, extruding lots of 3D things, and uh, and it would be nice maybe to to buy uh, the raw material, the raw plastic, and extrude my own filament. But in practice, it's um, it's not as simple as that, and I know it's not as simple as that, and. Uh, it may well be one of those things that you you bought because it seemed like it was a really good idea but then turns out not to be quite so All of those things obviously are in um, are in the technology area on Kickstarter, which is actually relatively easy to find things in. I noticed uh, a couple of the other things that I've backed, one well, uh, and this um, actually got funding was uh, one was a game by a company called Siam who make who made the Mist series of games, and they went. Uh, went on Kickstarter for a game called Abduction, um, but I wouldn't have known that was there, even though I I randomly go through the other categories. Things like uh, computer games are really hard to find, and uh, another one that I I backed but didn't actually meet its goals, although it's still going ahead, was um, a model N gauge. So an N gauge model railway engine train of the Pendolino and um, that one even though I knew it was on Kickstarter it uh, and I knew what category it was in it took me about an hour to find the thing eventually I gave up and started searching on Google and found somebody that had posted the link but um, that was another one that I backed and that's due around about Christmas so that could be interesting I've not got anything to run it on so it's going to be a shelf queen for a while I think I mentioned to you guys that um, I am hoping when I get the new studio, maybe I'll actually build a, a model, uh, a model train layout because I uh, I would love to be able to, um, apart from just building the models, I'd love to be able to completely computerize that. And I wanted a model railway layout since I was a kid. I'm not sure I know what to do with it. And once I built it, I probably uh, would probably lose interest in it if I wasn't um, going to try and computerise it. But I half suspect that if I do succeed in fully computerising it, I'll lose interest in it then as well. But at least then the computer can play trains and I can just watch it occasionally. Right, um,
That would be awesome. I'm assuming that refers to the model train layout, but I'm not actually sure, Grier. <laughs> uh, certainly would be kind of a fun thing uh, to do. and uh, Because potentially I'd stream doing it. Um, I'm getting well. It wouldn't be. Uh, it wouldn't be a stream until it's complete type of thing. Um, you know, like I do with you know streaming every night the same thing. It would probably be an occasional sort of. Uh, I don't know. Let's build a, a station or, <laughs> um, yeah, build a signal box or whatever goes into this. Actually, I've got a theme in mind for it, which will allow me to run any train I like for any period, and the weird of it. It looks so uh, it would be like um, if I just pick something like a I don't know a 1930s bit of the layout with a modern yeah you know, high-speed modern modern electric locomotive running down it with a pantog you know with an electric catenary on it and uh, that such a thing such a weird layout but I have kind of got a theme that would encompass that. Yep. Train cam. Uh, interesting. Train cam, well, the, um, I was going to say, train cam would potentially be quite hard, but in actual fact it probably wouldn't. It might be on end scale. You'd need something like a Bluetooth or a, um, a Wi-Fi link to stream the actual video. But it's actually an interesting idea. I mean, to, to record video is fairly easy because you can get things like... Um, your key fob cameras are little camera modules that are about the size of how you know sort of that sort of size you know a small like a, a laser pointer size um, thing which would sit on an end scale um, wagon of some kind broadcasting it would be quite an interesting one because the, the 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 thing about that though it, that intrigues me is uh, would be to make it look and I'll put this in quotes real so it it, it would look as uh, so it might look like a model railway layout but it looks like you're actually a person sat on whatever it is the truck that's being you know um, driven what do you do with trucks pulled pushed whatever around so you get the you get the human perspective of it. So it doesn't it doesn't look like like you see somewhere you're kind of looking down and you see little trains. It's actually you built it as though you actually sat there at the right height with the right field of view, so that it actually looked like you were going round the layout. Yeah. But it's still, I still love to get at that right height. So. You know, if you if you say you sat at a junction, um, the camera would be at the right position. So you know you you'd have to look up to the top of the train, for example. You wouldn't be looking down on it, or you wouldn't be sort of too low. As a, well, I suppose you could be laid on the ground, but you know what I mean. That's an interesting sort of idea to to play about with. Is that it might involve something some sort of fiber optic feed maybe to uh, to uh, to the camera itself so you know in order to get it at the right place uh, it's interesting it's an interesting idea and that's the sort of thing I'd probably be more interested in experimenting with rather than just playing you know in quotes playing with trains but as I say that's that's later this year and then there's there's, there's a whole lot of whole raft of work to involved in doing that from starting you know just planning uh, I mean I know this is roughly the size I've got and I want this to be on the layout idea is, is, is on two layers but with the third layer in the middle and that's kind of like your logic Grier <laughs> it's a two layer layout with three layers <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, at some point I'll explain that and uh, yeah, you, so you, you kind of want to lay, uh, probably use some form of software to lay the track out 
you know, to make sure it kind of fits and everything else and um, that it's physically possible looking at gradients because if you're talking about two layers I'd probably need a, a spiral uh, to get between the layers uh, or that would be the safest way but that has to be of a certain size and things like that and then there's actually building just the framework for it there's all the then there's all the wiring all the scenery all the signaling uh, the controllers for that there's, there'll be a lot of software involved uh, and then there's all the actual sort of model building itself of course and um, you know the, the buildings the scenery the trees whatever it is but I do kind of want to get to that um, it sort of looks real when you look at it from the right place love to be able to do that so that might sort of be like Saturday afternoon stream or something like that rather than uh, or an occasional Monday or something and I just picked Monday as a random example there I didn't actually mean it would definitely be a Monday I thought that just crossed my mind there because when this stream finishes I'm going to be watching Matt Pendleton um, who is uh, he's, he's, I'm almost certain he's currently streaming um, Train Simulator the, uh, the thought that just crossed my mind that would be kind of really cool to try and do because I don't know if you've seen his anybody's seen his stream but he actually has a, he's got a, a rail driver which is a console that mimics some of the um, train controls but then he's got a set of control gauges flight they're actually flight gauges from Cytec uh, around um, uh, built into a console in front of him uh, which he's written his own software for to interface to uh, to train simulator so that uh, instead of him seeing the gauges on the screen he sees them in real life um, but the um, the thing about that is the rail driver uh, and and all the gauges and the train simulator and the, the train simulator up to each other. So the, the the idea which just occurred to me then was it would be fun to build a layout, but then model that layout in train simulator and use something like the rail driver setup to drive the model in train simulator but then have those two talking to the actual layout so the trains went around exactly as you were driving them in the simulator and possibly then the fun bit would to be would be to sort of feed you know video side by side something like that to see um, something you know I don't know I'm just playing with ideas but just a weird idea like that came off my head that's um, hmm maybe impossible maybe it'll never happen but <laughs> you can have a you can dream a little bit or i can dream a little bit Okay, so that honing block works. Hmm. 
It might be better to actually use a, a hardening stone, which I might see if I can dig out, but um, rather, than, rather than the leather strop, it's not uh, necessarily too successful as a leather strop, but because uh, it, it drags on the strop a little bit. I don't actually want to damage the strop because I want to use that obviously to uh, sharpen chisels, but it does work. One of the other things that I'm hoping to get running for this weekend, by the way, is um, a website. I'm sort of half building it at the moment uh, with all the uh, previous artwork on it. So that should be an interesting thing. Evening, Eddie Fall Guy. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the studio this evening. Um, I've almost finished, well I've almost, that's that's an understatement, almost finished filling in blocks. I haven't almost finished at all. There's quite a lot still to do. But uh, we're getting there. Um, Trying to be really light here. I want I do want this to be in shadow, really sort of really dark looking. I don't want it to be um, to jump out at you. Uh, Mystery Mania Man, thank you very much for following the studio. I do appreciate you doing that. I I, I really like it when people follow. It's uh, it's nice people want to do so. so thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. Although that's just I don't know if a uh, oh, mystery many man um, you are in the street. Um, the whilst the alert came up on screen there uh, on the window to the side of me here apparently um, you've come back in time uh, mystery mania man because it says you'll be following in seven hours <laughs> which is which is really quite amazing <laughs> you're uh, you're a time traveler welcome to the studio So in addition to time traveling, do you uh, do you do any art yourself, or are you just enjoying watching uh, watching the the art and crafts that are going on in uh, in the creative section? <laughs> I can also hear. A pussy cat, which is um, 
sat on that sat on, sat on, sat on our doorstep because he's meowing to come in. Uh, yeah, it's quite quite amazing, Mystery Man, how you've managed to do that. <laughs> um, I don't think he's going to get let in for a while yet, so he's not going to appear on stream tonight, I don't think. But uh, he's uh, he's quite a polite pussy cat. I know my wife keeps uh, thinking, well, keeps suggesting, I'm hoping in jest, of putting a doorbell on for the pussycats, because uh, uh, Felix, uh, for one, puts his paw up against the door, and he literally just puts it against the glass in the door. So, um, um, you know, when you see his paw up, you know he wants to come in, and Junior will meow, and then he'll sit and wait for about five, ten minutes, and then he'll meow again. Sort of like his own doorbell, um, but my wife keeps suggesting putting a doorbell there, and I'm thinking, do you really want a cat door uh, doorbell when the cat wants to come in at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it's going to have to have an off switch on it. Ah <laughs> uh, dear. Um, you're in. Oh, okay. Well, welcome. Uh, you'll certainly get a range of arts and crafts uh, in this channel, if nothing else. Because you, you're watching, obviously, Scraperboard at the moment. But I also do uh, relief carving with hand tools, mainly. Uh, later this year, we may, we may use some power tools, but hand tools at the moment. I do pyrography. We've just finished a couple of pieces before we started this Scraperboard. Um, I do... Pyrography, scraperboard, punch craft. Pyrography, scraperboard. I can't remember what I do. Punch craft, that's a bit like miniature rug making. You use a, a needle to push thread through uh, material uh, to create a loop. Uh, and then you create pictures and things with it. Pyrography, carving, scraperboard, punch craft. Oh, and jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I've got a I've got a terrible memory for what I actually do. But we 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 go through those five, um, and at some point I have some fuse beads set over there when I can think of something to do. And I occasionally do will do other things. I did build a I mean it's a quadcopter on stream uh, a little while ago, and I have one or two other things that I'd like to build. I probably will do them on stream. Um, I've got a tank to complete. I've got a small laser cutter or a laser engraver. I've got a 3D printer uh, and I've got some truck kits to build as well. Um, doorbell for the cats. Yeah, um, I think they'd use it actually. Pick a pin game. Don't understand. Uh, oh, is this? No, I don't understand that one. But yeah, you need to um, need to be a bit careful there, lady. You'll um, you'll you'll be. I was about to say you'll be running everything, but I think you were being scout uh, volunteer to be scoutmaster, so you are running everything. <laughs> Uh, chain, chain mail. Yeah, I, I kind of don't really often talk about it as chain mail. Certainly um, with people at work, for example, as soon as you say chain mail, people think of um, armour, you know, knights and things like that. And this can't grasp chain mail. Once they've got the image in their mind, then it's really hard for them to think of it as jewellery. Because it's clothing, you know, it's it's a great big metal thing, and it's really hard unless you then actually sort of um, pull out, you know, a little, you know, a sample or an actual chain like like that, which is chain mail. Um, so I tend to just describe it as uh, jewelry and uh, made from rings. And if and then once they've got that in their mind, you can say, you know, and you can use the same thing to make chain mail. And then you know, technically it's the same thing, but. I do um, I do tend to avoid it to start with just because it's easier. People understand then. 
which is which is a, a little bit odd when you think how can you not understand but oh i see yeah so it's um a bit like the old uh, paper in a straw or whatever you pull a straw and if there's um, paper in it and uh, on the paper's written what you win so oh, okay so you're going to be um doing lots and lots and lots of little tiny holes oh there's a heck of a lot of people it's you know live action role play um lapping isn't it where uh, and you know so people pretend to be yeah, knights of old or vikings or what whoever would wear chain mail and um reenact things and then um you've got you've got sort of the old you've got the actual re people who reenact things as well you know they like historical societies and things like that so they um, they kind of want it but that sort of chain mail can be made these days with um kind of like steel knitting machines you know the actual machines will make the chain mail and uh, it's not sort of something that you'd kind of wonder how well I can't imagine people wanting to pay somebody to hand make it because of the uh, the cost involved okay mystery man it's been nice to see you thank you very much for dropping in I'm around from 8 p.m. in the UK each night 1900 hours GMT so about two hours ago I started and every night excuse me about the same time you'll catch me um, actually I did what I was just thinking of in instead of a sheet of plywood why not just a sheet a big sheet of foam that way then you don't have to drill any holes you can uh, paint the foam with um, and insulation foam actually would work because it's quite dense rather than the expanded polystyrene stuff um, and you could probably get some from a DIY show, uh, di DIY depot paint the surface uh, and then you can actually just stick just poke the cocktail sticks in <laughs> and you don't actually have to do um, any drilling or anything like that it you know it might not survive well it wouldn't survive more than one or two uses but it certainly would be a bit easier uh, in making it and of course you don't need to paint the sticks and you can just dip them in the paint <laughs> let me get on with a bit more of this because uh, I'm not I'm don't I'm not gonna actually be going on for much longer <laughs> okay fair enough oh i just don't envy a, a drilling um what would it be lots and lots of three millimeter holes that's one heck of a um, dedication is that so i'm holding that out of the way oh, yeah three millimeter holes for those that's um I suppose you could have fun as well I mean you can you can drill them in a pattern so you could uh, I don't know uh, so that when they're in when there's lots of them in you they you know the top sticking out look like the the, the um, 
the troop that was the word I was looking for the troop name or something like that <laughs> but yeah oh well what have you got there you got it lying about you got it lying about you know uh, I have the advantage for that though um, where is it have I put it away Ah, oh, I can't find it now. No, I can't find it now. Um, I have a little miniature projector. So, um, it's, why is it the size of, it's, it's about the size of a mobile phone, but a little bit thicker. Um, which is great. <laughs> I can, you can project sort of 60 inch screens. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just playing with it. Yeah, just throwing totally random ideas in the air. It was um, for no other reason than it's just fun sometimes to throw totally random ideas in the air. Okay. I was going to say, I usually have mine out. Um, not that I use it that often. But sometimes um, when I was uh, airbrushing, it was sometimes useful uh, to draw an outline on uh, on small on the small paper or, or on the screen and then project that and trace rather than trying to trace something onto a sort of an A3 sheet of paper just because it's you have to stand back to see what you're drawing. But when you get close, you can't always see it. And then it, it's, it's quite, it can be quite difficult to draw sort of big outlines. But um, so it, come, it comes in useful for that. It's usually sat somewhere on my desk, but I can't actually see it. So it probably means I've actually put it away. Oh, it's there. I had actually put it away. So in, in addition to airbrushing, here's one of the tools of, uh, of an airbrush artist. Here's a projector. I don't know if this is, if the battery's flat. Yeah, the battery's flat. But a uh, little, in fact, it's quite an old one, is this? So they're a lot smaller these days. In fact, I, I did notice there's a projector that um, fits inside a, a laptop these days. But that's a projection lens in the front there. It's not it's not a particularly high resolution one it's a VGA or just slightly better than VGA but um, it does the job and if uh, you, you can watch films on it and things like that because you just put um, uh, what is it an SD card in the side yeah, an SD card with a with a movie on it and you can project it anything obviously more screen like the better but it's quite a nice um, quite a nice little tool Yeah. Well, that's I mean that's that's not meant for, that's meant for literally sort of being used anywhere. I used to use it occasionally at work rather than carry a big projector around. Um. You know what? I'm going to stop there for tonight. I think rather than do any more of that so we've made a heck of a lot of progress there we've finished it finished in quotes filling in the uh, quite a lot of stone work put a doorway a door in the doorway or at least something in the doorway i don't know whether it, it, at the moment it looks more like a wall than a door and i might just leave it like that because maybe the door opens the other way and that saves me having to sort of try and illustrate the edge of a door or uh, probably on something like this it would be like wood upright wood um, planks I'm trying to put some of that into there perhaps and it kind of just looks like a, a, um, a hallway at the moment so maybe I'll leave it like that I think um, since it looks good so we'll be filling more of these in on this side tomorrow then then we start to have more fun 
with making odd bricks stand out, giving them a texture because at the moment they look quite flat. Uh, you know, reflecting some light off them, making some of them stand out more. Let's stand this up a little bit. So, just hide my face cam for a moment. Let's tip that up so you can uh, see what it's kind of looking like at the moment. So we'll start a bit like it's been done down here. Um, just start adding in something, some more scrapes and scratches to make it stand out a little bit more. This looks really good on camera. Uh, it's again, it's one of these pieces that uh, you need to stand a long way away from, and when you do it, uh, it looks a lot better. I, I, if it looked as good in real life, being as close to it as I am, as it does on camera, I'd be tempted to leave that, <laughs> just like that, um, because it it kind of looks really good. I, I kind of well, I do like the sort of the odd texturing on the on the roof. It's it's just it is just like moonlight would uh, glint off of uh, off little bits of. Uh, reed that's on the roof uh, and what have you uh, <laughs> but unfortunately when you can see in person you 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 see all the individual lines so unless you stand back from it and I know somewhat at work you do stand back several feet um, and look at it and it's meant to be looked at like that um, I think with small pieces like this you tend to want to get closer and therefore you need it to look better at the distance I'm looking at it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do my um, usual advert and that is uh, to say if there's anybody that's watching that isn't uh, following me, I would greatly appreciate it if you did so. Uh, it's always nice to know that people uh, are interested in what you're doing and would like to uh, uh, to know more or to come back to see more and uh, so the follow button as usual is just below the window I don't actually know where because I haven't got one up so somewhere down here is a follow button uh, but if you would like you are also welcome to follow me on Twitter that way you'll get a tweet when I go live because I do tweet when I go live not when I have my breakfast um, or alternatively, if you'd just like to catch me uh, tomorrow, as I mentioned earlier, I stream generally from around 8pm in the UK every evening. That's 20 hundred hours uh, British summer time, 19 hundred hours GMT, or about 2 hours and 10 minutes ago in whatever time zone you're in. That would be 8 o'clock, and that'll be roughly the time tomorrow when I start streaming. Apart from that, everybody... Thank you very much for uh, being in the stream tonight, for watching, for those of the, you that have been chatting as well. It's been fantastic. I've had a great deal of fun showing you the art and chatting with you and talking about all sorts of weird things. I hope to uh, see you again tomorrow when we can do some of it all again. Bye-bye.